Hey guys, many of you have asked about our no locking features. So today I will make a quick explanation of how to use them. You can find our features by going to the find exploit tab. And here we will have some built in features, which I personally think is very, very nice. These ones are somewhat straightforward. A station is more on the call happy side. The bullet would be more on the aggressive side. And the knit is somewhere in between, usually lean to be more passive with the medium strength hands. I will show you some examples of how to use the profile or the decision points. So if we look at the grid, especially here, we can see that, for example, our sets is always pure betting. The reason they are always pure betting is because that's the highest EV. So they never actually wants to check unless you have a very, very good reason. While if we look at a hands like two pairs, over pair and top pair, you can see that the decision making are starting to become a little bit more nuanced. So that means that it doesn't really matter if you're better or check, the EV will be very close. Now, this might be true in the GTO simulation, but once we tend to lock what our opponent is doing, usually they're going to lean towards betting more or checking more. They will rarely be neutral in EV. So how can we find out how to adjust? So let's say we are betting and we are facing a knit who is a very, very large knit. Now what's happened here is you can see that the middling hands here are actually starting to fold, which is very huge for the imposition EV because now you can just auto profit with a lot of your hands. Let's go to the compare GTO tab and let's look at the actual strategy. I like to have the GTO on the left side, but that is of preference. And I think what's really, really important to notice here is the EV of your strategy, how much it actually goes up. And this will be true in a lot of spots, not necessarily all of them. And here we are doing a somewhat big adjustment, right? It's it's not like we aren't adjusting a lot. So we also have to make sure that our adjustments are correct. So in this scenario, if we know that uh, out of position will overfold as much and raise less, now we will obviously have a lot of plus EV decisions. And something that is undervalued for many is when you actually get to turn with more hands, you actually get to bluff more on later streets and bluff out of position off his medium strength hands more often. And that's also something that is factored into the EV. That's why it's very, very important to keep your opponents indifferent on flop so they don't get to barrel it off later um, with any two, basically. Okay, so let's go back to the GTO strategy. And this you can do by go to change straight. Here, if we go to the GTO now, Let's say we find exploits. And now we want to say, hey, my opponent is somewhat passive, but he isn't as passive as this profile, right? So let's say we just say, okay, I think it's 20 more, 20% 20 more passive than on average. Now I can lock all as passive, and you can see here it's a tiny bit less racing. Well, let's say I don't think my opponent is actually racing enough with his merge hands. So I'm gonna put on the decision and I'm gonna color these like this. Okay, so let's say our opponent, he understands how to race, but he's mostly equity driven and doesn't necessarily find those pairs. Now what you want to do after this is go to GTO and lock the rest as GTO. So the strategy doesn't change overall. And now let's hit calculate again. Okay, we have calculated. Let's go back to compare GTO. And now I'm doing the same thing. And now we can see that there's a little bit difference in the strategy. And here we can go to the exploit tool we had previously. And now 
the way you kind of want to work in this scenario is trying to understand like okay how far can i push it comfortably right so if you're playing passive opponents either if they're overfolding or under racing you can see that you end up with the same scenario so most likely you can bet every hand in this scenario once you have a passive opponent so this is a good way to try to understand how to adapt to the situation. I highly suggest that you run multiple scenarios. You see, okay, I'm facing a guy that doesn't race much. I'm facing a guy that's calling too much. I'm facing a guy yeah, that is deviating in any sort. Then you can kind of find your baseline within that and you would know what kind of hands you can push equity with, right? So let's go back again. I go to chain street, now I go to GTO. And now let's say we are facing a little bit different kind of opponent, one who is more on the aggressive side. So let's say we face someone who is like hyper, hyper aggressive. Okay, this will maybe be a little bit too aggressive. Let's say he's 25% more aggressive. All right, so this, there are some people that play this kind of strategy. So let's hit calculate. Okay, and now we have calculated our option. Let's go to compare GTO again. And let's go to put the GTO over here. Now we can see some differences in the strategy. So what is the main difference in our strategy? So the main difference in our strategy is that we are slowing down a bit with the medium hands. They still will have a lot of equity. So it isn't that they can't bet, but you can see here, like when you don't have a heart, you're probably going to check. Um, and what else can we notice? We can notice that our offset region are mostly betting still. And the reason for this is even though they are going to get raised a lot, they won't have too much equity to deal with turn probes. So they actually like to bet either way. So the way I would look at this is like, okay, what part of my range actually prefers betting no matter the result and what hands kind of wants to check more. And the obvious reasons here are, are easy. You can see, once we are going to face race, we are going to bet more of our strong hands straight away just because they can build a pot. You can also see a hand like aces is betting more, but the main part of the strategy is still the same because in the end, your range is very, very strong. So there isn't too much out of position can do here to kind of like combat the strength of your range. But I just want to highlight, like, if you look at like the queen jacks, uh, the queen tens, these are kind of the hands that will be very, very vulnerable because they might not look so good here, but if they make a pair on turn versus a wide range, they will still have a lot of showdown and they aren't necessarily the one to push equity either way. So you maybe want to play more passive with this and kind of trap your opponent in a dilemma where he's actually building the pot versus a strong range. So let's go back for the last scenario on how to use this. Now, let's say we are in the other end and, oh, sorry, we, to reset the matrix and let's say that either position is making the adjustment but he aren't sure of how we are playing so let's say we put this tendency of power to be very very aggressive and we do the calculation now this is where things are gonna get very very interesting right so <clears throat> if we now look at this strategy uh, I'm going to switch sides again. Now you can see that we are actually meant to play this way as we locked before, right? So these kind of node locks, they are very, very sensitive to the strategy deviation. And it's very, very important that you deviate in a manner that makes sense. 
So, okay, let's say we look at the total EV of this strategy now. So the EV here is 18.8. .8. Now let's look at actually how much this strategy is worth, right? So if we go back, um, let's go to find exploits. And what we can do now is we lock these hands. Let's reset matrix first. So let's go to aggressive, lock all as aggressive. And now we bet. And what we want to do here is actually go to GTO and we want to lock all as GTO. So this way we can see how much the adjustment is actually worth. Do we need to raise to make our opponent indifferent when he's betting too much or do we not? So let's check it out. Okay. The simulations is done. Let's go to exploit five and exploit six. Exploit five would be the one where we actually deviate. And once it goes bet, you can see that the EV of not adjusting is worth less. Here you have to ask yourself how confident are you actually in the exploit? Because in my scenario, 0 0.5 BB is worth still a lot if you're 100% sure. But also from looking at the post lob deviations, I would say if you are able to implement this strategy very, very good, you will still make a lot of money and you will still retain some of that EV. Now, there is a difference between 18 point, say 18.1, close to 17.5 but you have to understand that once the strategy isn't complete this number will deviate so this is one way of making sure that you get the deviation so the other scenarios will this will be probably a higher discrepancy is when let's say in position only are supposed to bet 30 percent of the time and now we're starting to bet 100 percent of the time so in nuanced spots just make sure that you measure up the ev and actually how much you want to trade off. Some people will say, I will play this strategy until other is stated. And some will say, hey, I just gonna learn the GTO strategy. And if I know he's a more aggressive, maybe I want to turn up the frequency with some hands. So how could we merge this strategy? We can merge this strategy by looking at some of the hands that are indifferent to race or call. So very typical hands would be 8685. And you can see here the EV of raising those are somewhat identical. Uh, if you have the backdoor flush draw, I would probably lean towards exploiting with that region. Because now you say, hey, if I raise, mm, it won't cost me anything, but I might be able to actually gain some EV, but I actually won't lose any EV, right? So the way I would look at this from the next stage is like, okay, what kind of hands is actually indifferent to my racing strategy? And here you can see, for example, that the races between the hard combos would be indifferent. So maybe we turn up that frequency and try to learn like combo selections and heuristics to be like, Hey, I have a good GTO strategy. And if I'm unsure, but I want to try to exploit some, you can minorly exploit with certain combos, right? But in general, I think you should play around with this tool. Um, as I showed you, there are countless ways to use node locks. And I think the way you should use node locks is kind of like a Wikipedia for your Sims, right? So you want to say, okay, what happens if someone bets too much? What happens if someone checks too much? What happens if someone only bets value? What happens if um, someone only checks value only bets air? And this way you will build your int intuition, right? It was almost be a, like a dojo for your um, adjustments in game. So I think this is a very, very good tool to use for that. And I think the way we are created it had made it really, really easy for you to do so. So try out the different functions. You can use the decision, you can use custom and brush if you want 75%. You can use the aggressive, passive, and whenever you want to reset the strategy, you just go to reset matrix. Okay, guys, I hope that covered most of the no-locking features. Um, 
and I hope you enjoy the tool as much as I do and have a great day.